Hello, here's my new tool slash toy, if my wife is the one to describe it. This is a CNC router. This has a cutting envelope of two feet, two feet, actually about 26 inches by four feet by 10 inches in the Z. Um, here's my first little uh, trial cut. Um, learned a couple things with it. Here's my first little tool gouge. This is uh, my first lesson. Um, this is built for me at my request from someone in the local area who builds these for various parties. Um, this is a three horsepower spindle wired like so, 30 amps. I have it connected via USB from the control box down there. This is uh, for the spindle. This is for the various motors. I guess I should show you the motors. There's one here. This drives it back and forth this way. This motor drives the spindle up and down. And then those are motor back here, right behind here, which drives the table this way along the X axis. This back here is a little uh, computer cooling station or port. Um, basically it has liquid cooling, which is uh, coolant from a vehicle and it runs it through the spindle, through this and then through this little radiator with this big fan on it. Keeps it very, very cool. I'll now move it around a little bit, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I have it zeroed out what I'm gonna start, but let's just move it around a little bit. Let's go up in the Z. See, now we're higher. I'll do a little bit more. Move over on the Y axis. And even if we want to move over on the X. Oops. That's interesting. Looks like it was trying to drive it a little too strong. Okay. I'm going to have to re zero my X axis, unfortunately. Uh, before I cut start, so let me pause the video and then I will continue soon thereafter. All right, here we are back again. I hope that I have solved my issues. I'm going to now show you what I'm going to cut. This is represents a two foot by one foot section, um, which I intend to cut basically right here. And this is what I intend to cut. I'm doing so with an eight inch end mill. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I've already exported the path and this is the program. This whole thing here is the code to run that path. So cross your fingers. Wait, safety goggles necessary. All right, here it goes. That's not gonna work. Faux pas, I have not secured my workpiece. Spindle off. Let's just go ahead and secure the workpiece. And now I remember from my last time that this is basically, these corners are matched up and this is parallel and this is parallel. So what I'm going to do is secure it, wrap it down, and then retry. The end result will be a little messed up maybe, but We'll deal with it. Okay, this is not the best work holding solution I have, but it's the only one I have at the moment before I make or buy a different way to do this. 
Um, so it, as you may see, this carriage has a possibility of imp impacting this, but I know from the code that it shouldn't do so because we've only got two feet to go this way. And this is always to the left of the two feet, and this is more than two feet. So let's, uh, let's try again. Okay, we're going to restart, rewind the code basically, and hit go. The x-axis has faulted again. Not cool. Not cool at all. Yeah, this is this is becoming annoying. So now I'm going to get to re-zero the X and start again. This will take just a few minutes, so give me a sec. <sighs> okay, I need to zip different system. This is kind of annoying. So I can specify where in here or here or here I want zero to be. For this particular work surface, I've said zero is this corner up here. And all the coordinates are based off of that being true. But whenever this faults or it doesn't move where I want it to move or I have to stop it in the middle, it's a problem because I have to re-figure out where this point is. It's not referential to the actual machine. So I think what I need to do is be able to have 000, zero, zero be some uh, same point always on the machine and then have this be a work offset that I can measure the first time and that will always be the same time thereafter. I'm not going to do that for this run, but... It's definitely something I need to do because this is annoying so far. That said, I have re-zeroed it and am ready to try again. Cross your fingers. Let's rewind and start. Let's get the vacuum out, because I can't see Jack right now. And let's turn the speed up. Maybe we can use compressed air. Then make a mess, but I'll clean it up later. Okay, you can see where we're going here. See the screws going back and forth. The screw going up and down. I need to print out a little cover for this. That's going to be annoying. Now I'm going to need to sand that, but the fact that I drew this up in a few minutes and I'm cutting it and it's not really loud, I'm pretty happy so far.
definitely need to get a proper dust containment system. It's gonna make the garage very dirty. I'll pause now until it's done. Okay, it's done. Went back home. Let's clean it up. looks very ratty. I think the problem here is that I'm using an up cutting bit so it cuts um, the bit spirals and it cuts kind of on the upturn um, as opposed to a down cutting bit so all this is frayed off. What I'm gonna do now is sand it down a little bit clean it off and then call it good. So I'll get my little palm sander and I'll be right back. I'm generally happy about this uh, cordless sander. It's kind of noisy but it's cordless! Works pretty well. There it goes. Definitely need dust containment. Okay, so I guess I can clean this off with just my finger now, but quality looks really good. This is just one of the fonts that uh, Windows happen to have. Um, I suppose if I was going to be really fancy, I would use something more festive, but I'm limited right now because I don't have very good end mills or cutters. I just ordered some. They're going to be here, who knows, early January probably. But uh, until then, I've just got my, and honestly this is a metal cutting end mill for high speed steel, two flute, eighth inch, and no, that's not exactly perfect in there. What I could do is just run it again, the whole program, to clean it up, I suppose. Now, there's a ton more I'm going to learn about machining. I've just, or CNC routing in this case, just scratched the surface. But I've got the tool, and it works. Not too long, I've carved out this side. That's pretty sweet. You know what? I think I'm just going to rerun it again with the piece not moved and the coordinates not changed at all and see if it makes it any cleaner. Um, even if it doesn't, I kind of call this a success. Besides so my x-axis faulting a little bit. I'll pause it now and I'll turn it on after we're almost done. Actually this would be kind of a good way to see how it does its thing. There's less material to get in the way. So you can see from our first little attempt, there's a little plunge here, that that's a problem. I couldn't sell this piece maybe, but uh, you can see that it kind of cleans out the inside first and then does the exterior. I 
think I need some better lighting. I'll have to get some LEDs printed up, or a holder printed up and attached to the LEDs. That's in the shadows. drill bit for this, but, or end mill for this, but you see how it's going. I'm a little impatient. This is it going through, it's, it's called G-code just little coordinates for the various axes to go in. This is the actual coordinates of the sat. Feed rate, spindle RPM, you know, it's just going at 12,000 RPM right now. The spindle goes up to 24,000. And honestly, it's really, really quiet. I'm happy about that. Which means I can do this sort of stuff when the kids are in bed and sleeping, and I don't have to worry about waking them up too much. So, good. Okay, it finished, went home, and turned itself off. Let's uh, blow it out and see if we got any better. Okay, I'm very pleased with this. Not too bad as a second cut. A couple lessons learned. Now this actually isn't very interesting in that uh, it's only straight down end mill cut, but I don't have the bits yet. I, I need various ball mill, ball end mill, and uh, V bits to carve interesting profiles, and I'll get those in the mail in a week or two. Uh, until then. Ha! Easy peasy. This has been Jeremy, and thanks for watching. And, oh, I should say, Merry Christmas. <laughs>